Hi, Kevin from the Matsaurus here, and in this video I'm going to go through the solutions to questions 1, 6, 11, 16 and 21 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. Just before we get started, let me tell you about a course that I've made to help you prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge, links in the description below. This is a totally free course, and in it I'm going to walk you through 20 problems that I've designed specifically for this course. They're challenging problems that will help you prepare for maths challenges and really just help you enjoy maths beyond the sorts of things you're doing at school. For each question, you'll first see the question on the screen, so you can have a go at it and try to work out the answer. Then, if you're stuck or you want to think of different ways of solving the problem, you can watch my video Hint, and then you can have another go at solving the problem. Once you think you've got the answer, you can choose the answer from a selection of multiple choice options on the screen. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. Then you can either have another go at the question if you got it wrong, or watch my video solution uh, if you are really stuck, or if you want to see if there's another way of solving the problem apart from the way that you did it. And it really is a totally free course, so I really hope you'll sign up below and work through these problems with me. Let me show you now the solutions to questions 1, 6, 11, 16 and 21 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. Because all of these numbers are smaller than 11 squared, we only need to check whether they are multiples of 2, 3, 5 or 7 to know if they're prime. If they're not multiples of any of those, they'll definitely be prime. Now, we can see none of them are even, so they're not multiples of 2. Uh, we can also see easily they're not multiples of 5 because they don't end in a 0 or a 5. Um, now, there's an easy test for uh, multiples of 3 which says add the digits together and see if it's a multiple of 3. So in the first one, 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2, that's not a multiple of 3, so it's not a multiple of 3. And you can check that for all the others, 1 plus 0 plus 3 is 4, etc. And you'll see if you look at E, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and so we know actually that one is a multiple uh, of 3, and this is the one that isn't prime. Uh, if we hadn't found a multiple of 3, I'd have also had to check uh, for 7. But we found the one that isn't prime, and so that's the answer, E. So we have to work out the value of this expression. Everything's already over a common denominator, so this is just the same as 6 minus 5 plus 4 minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 all over 12. Remember, bib mass applies here. Common mistake people make is that they try to do, um, you know, they do all the additions before the subtractions in something like this. But addition and subtraction in bib mass, really it should be written something like this, B I D M A S. A lot of teachers write it like this now because addition and subtraction have the same level of importance. So to work out something like this, I just do 6 minus 5 is 1, plus 4 is 5, minus 3 is 2, plus 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, and so I get 3 over 12, and uh, that gives me 1 quarter once I've simplified it, and so the answer is C. This 3x3 three three grid shows 9 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter squares and uses 24 centimeters of wire. Uh, what length of wire is required for a similar 20 by 20 grid? It's just worth checking in these questions that you really understand what it means and just check you can get this 24 centimeter answer from here, right? So it's saying, you know, that all of the side lengths of this, these in smaller squares are one centimeter. So if I added these together, I'd have one, two, three, like along the bottom here. So that'd be three, 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 that would be 12. And then there'd be three, 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 which is another 12. So I get 24 in total. And you see, checking that somehow gives you a bit of insight about the problem as well. Because if I extended this to uh, a 20 by, you know, a 20 by 20 grid and made this uh, a lot bigger, I don't want to draw out the whole thing here, um, right? But you can see that uh, perhaps I can do it a little bit more neatly than that, though. Um, you can see that you know, if I want a 20 by 20 grid, right? Let's keep going. Uh, let's just stop there. Right, so three by three grid, right, there were four vertical lines. Like if I go for if I go to six squares across, there's now seven vertical lines. So there's always one more vertical line than there are the number of squares. So if I go to twenty by twenty, right, there are going to be uh twenty one vertical lines. And similarly for the horizontal ones, there's one more than the number of squares, one, two, three, four here. And so there would also be twenty one uh going uh up in this grid. Right, so actually what I need here is I need, um, and but the actual length of the, each of these lines is still 20 centimetres, right? So uh, here I had four lines of three centimetres and I do that twice. So here I'm going to have 21 horizontal lines of 20 centimetres each and I'm going to have 21 vertical lines of 20 centimetres each. So I add those together. So 21 times 20 is 21 times 2 times 10 
which is 420. I'm going to have two of those. So 420 plus 420 or 420 times 2, that gives me 840 centimetres. And the final answer is E, 840. Question 16, you're given the sequence of digits 0, 6, 2, 5, and you're allowed to put a decimal point either at the beginning, the end, or in any other, any other position. So we can have 0 0.0625, we can have 0.625, we could have 6.25, we could have 62.5, or we could have 625. Okay, you know, when you can think of there being zeros at the front here, but that would be all the possible options. And it says, which of these numbers can you not make? Well, uh, if we go through them one at a time, 6 25ths, that would be 24 over 100, and so uh, that's not any of these, so actually I can just say that the answer is A, we might want to check all of the others, 5 8 is 0 0.625, 1 16th, you can do, you might know that 1 8 is uh, 0 0.125, and if you do half of that, like half of half of 125 is, is, is 60, 62 and a half, so you would get 0 point, um, 0 0.625, 25 over 4, that's 6 and a quarter, so that's 6.25, and 25 squared is 625, so we can make all the others, and the answer is A. Question 21, it says the digits of both the two-digit numbers in the first calculation have been reversed to give the numbers in the second calculation, but the answers stay the same. So 62, they've swapped the digits to get 26, 13, they've swapped the digits to get 31, and we want to know which of the calculations give the same thing here. So in A, uh, it would be 52 times uh, 63, right? Now, I don't need to do the calculation to know that these are not the same, because I know that multiplication preserves the last digits. That's another idea that I go through in one of the introductory videos in the full course, Go for Gold in the Junior Maths Challenge. Uh, so um, here I just check 5 times 6 ends in a, with 30 ends in a 0, 2 times 3 ends in a 6, so they can't be equal. Right, 34 times 42, that will turn into 43 times 24, 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, they don't have the same last digit, so they can't be equal. Uh, 54 times 56 will become 45 times 65, 4 times 6 is 24, 5 times 5 is 25, don't end on the same last digit, so it can't be that one. 42 times 48, um, 24 times 84 uh, is what we're looking at here now, 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 4 is also 16, so this one's a possibility. Um, the last digit thing is only going to rule things out here, so I've either now got to check that these are actually the same, or I could just look at the last one here, 23 times 34, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, don't have the same last digit, so it must be D. And then you can also look at D and say, well, yeah, that is right, because look, 48 is double 24, and 84 is double 42, so those calculations are going to give the same thing. Either way, the answer is D. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that the best way to prepare would be to click the link below and to sign up for my totally free online course.